Hey, aloha, Michelle Melendez with Blossom Inner Wellness. Um, I'm really excited to have Tina Leah from Maui again talking about the Wabakiam injected what male mosquitoes that they want to release in Hawaii. Now, now check this out. Now, just a reminder, they want to release between 300 million and 700 million per week in Maui. They want to do this starting next year, this year, actually 2023. I'm not sure when, maybe Tina knows when, but they want to release these injected mosquitoes, these male mosquitoes, where we're gonna talk about how easily and how scientific studies have documented that it is very likely that females with this um, strain of Wolbachian bacteria can be released. We're gonna be talking about that. Why we're doing this is that there's public comment that, that there, the Maui environmental assessment is asking for public comment. Do we have a chance right now to ask them hey, we want a full environmental impact statement slash study done before they release these. And we're gonna tell you why that is so, so important because they're gonna to start to release this. The, the, it's gonna be over 40 billion of these mosquitoes over 60 acres of, uh, of acres in Maui's first. Then it goes to Kauai, then it goes, I think Oahu or, or Big Island, but all the islands. They also want a um, bio lab. They wanna be creating a bio lab here in the state of Hawaii for these mosquitoes. There is no end date in sight. There's no, they don't wanna stop this. There's no end date, so it's indefinite. They wanna keep doing this over and over again. And in their assessment on page eight, of, uh, of the the federal one, I can't remember, I'll, I'll ask you, Tina, what, um, actually I'll send the, I'll put, put that page in the link below because in the assessment, it literally states, they don't even know if this is gonna work. And now why are they doing this? Because they wanna save the native birds and they're saying the native birds are dying from malaria. They're not doing anything about the mongoose that are killing birds and eating their eggs when they can be actually focusing on different things. There's also, different ways that they can be saving these birds with um, uh, doing a breeding um, uh, uh, experiment or a breeding situation where they actually breed these birds and then release them. Lots of different things they can be doing to save these native bird birds versus introducing a bacterium that's not in the state of Hawaii. This bacterium they wanna release is not in the state. This is gonna be introduced from outside the islands onto the islands. And it can affect the environment, people and animals, soil, so many different things. We're gonna be talking about that. But my last thing before I introduce Tina Leah on Maui, the last thing I wanna say is that all you have to do is click on the link in the description, click on the link in the description and make a comment to the Maui environmental assessments people over there. I even wrote what you can write and the different studies that you can um, just copy and paste that into the comments and you can change it however you want to change it. It's your comment, but this is the way that the public has power for the state to know that we want a full environmental impact study statement slash study to be done before this outside bacteria comes into the state of, of Hawaii. Tina, thank you so much for joining. This woman is, lives on Maui. And she has been studying the 260 page environmental assessment from Maui, 260 pages where she has been going through, going through, going through what it is, what they're trying to tell us and why this is so dangerous for the islands and the people on it. So thank you so much for joining us, Tina, joining me. Thank you so much for getting this information out to the public and we're getting so much response and, um, we had we just had the EPA uh, exemption application that we also had an opportunity to comment on, and that comment period has closed. But there were 258 comments showing on there, which is actually really surprising. It was kind of a difficult process. They didn't make it so easy <laughs> to do that. Uh, if you go on there, it's only showing a couple comments. They haven't reviewed them all yet, but that's that's major. And I'm hoping we can get thousands of people to comment on this environmental assessment. Um, we really need to to stand up and be heard um, on yes. this. And I, one thing I do want to say, the um, project area is actually 64,666 acres. It's enormous. A thousand. It's, it's Thank basically you. the entire East Maui area. Um, so yeah, that, 
This is a, a pretty big project and it has no end date and it has a lot of serious risks and the public uh, needs to understand more about it. And I'm hoping what we can do here is make it something that the public wants to learn about. And um, I, I wanna make sure that people know that this information is coming from peer reviewed studies. It's coming from scientific experts and it's coming directly from the state of Hawaii's own documentation from this environmental assessment. And we're gonna show you, you know, their words. And so yes. if anybody who wants to think that this is some kind of misinformation or, you know, we're just coming up with things, absolutely all of this is verifiable. And the bulk of it is in the state's own documentation and as well as the federal documentation that ties into this project. Yeah, and that is also going to be in the link below. So if you want to see what are, what are these girls talking about, you know, we're um, I left I'm putting the link to this Maui environmental assessment in the link below, so you can see that this is not coming from us. I'm not a scientist, but I am very concerned. I live on the Big Island of Hawaii. Tina lives on Maui. I have friends all throughout the state, and this is going to change the entire environment if we don't speak up about this. So again, comment below. The link is below, and you can read it for yourself. What we're talking about. So the first thing I want to talk about is the male injected. What they want to do is they want to manually and through AI separate male and females, inject the male mosquito with this Wolbachian bacteria that then when he mates with the female, it sterilizes her. Now the possibility, what's the most concerning about this is that this experiment was done in Singapore three females got out in Singapore, they had a, a plan of action of what to do if that happens because a female, one female mosquito can actually produce 160,000 females. She can, re, she can produce, reproduce these in her eight week lifespan. So th that's why three females in Singapore got out. They knew that if she starts breeding, it's going to explode. They er eradicated all of them in the area. So they had a plan of action. Here's what's the most scariest part about this. Hawaii has no plan of action. There's no plan. If a female gets out and starts breeding, that's it. They have no plan of action to stop it. So why is this so dangerous about this Wolbachium um, bacteria, Tina? What, what are the findings that you're, that you're seeing? So because they're using a different strain of the bacteria than the one that exists already on our islands, um, we don't know how that can affect pathogen infection is one of the primary concerns um, that that can increase the ability of the mosquitoes to transmit disease basically to each other, to other uh, organisms, <laughs> to wildlife, to the birds. Um, we don't really know. It can also, because of... Um, not just what you're saying with the accidental release, which we'll also talk about, but they can create those mosquitoes, the female um, version of this mosquito carrying that bacterial strain that we don't have on the island. They can create it in the wild through this horizontal transmission of the bacteria through the standing water and the feeding sites. Um, and this would be an unintended uh, trans transmission of that bacterial strain as opposed to what they're intending, which is, as you said, um, through the breeding um, and actually the sterilization process is that because the strain of the bacteria that these lab males have is different than the strain that the females would have, the, the existing wild ones here would have, it means that the eggs aren't viable. Um, and then mm -hmm. supposedly the females are only going to mate, you know, that one time and then that'll be it. And so in that way, but, but actually <laughs> that's not even true. <laughs> so um, that's a whole other story. But yeah, and then as far as the um, accidental release of the females, um, that's, I'm going to just say that is going to happen. It's, it's documented in studies. They're releasing millions of them. The state has admitted it's likely to happen. Um, and I don't know if they said likely, but it's possible that it'll happen. It's possible. They said it's, it's likely possible. and or inevitable. I'm going to go ahead and say they haven't addressed that at all in the environmental assessment. Um, and, you know, that can cause the population of the mosquitoes here to be replaced with this mm -hmm. lab reared strain. We have no idea how that's going to affect the environment or the birds or, you know, the, the disease <laughs> trans 
transmittal, we know that there's possibility of increased ability to transmit um, West Nile virus, avian malaria, mm -hmm. all, all kinds of documented studies with different mosquitoes um, of how that can be affected. So this is a huge concern. They're not addressing it at all. They're not, and as you said, they have no plan. And there they are no things plan. that they could be doing. They, they do um, a different technique where they use this Wabakia technique in combination with the sterile insect technique, which is um, irradiating in addition to the bacteria. And that would make it so that if a female was accidentally released, she's already sterilized um, I don't know, completely or to a certain extent, but they're not doing that. They're not even looking at that. So why, I, you know, why, why are they doing it this way? And why are they not addressing these very serious concerns? Why is the public not aware of this? We need to make sure people understand this is real. This is documented. We have, you know, studies <laughs> showing this is likely going to happen so yes so again comment click on the link below comment this is a public comment i have something that you can copy and paste you can change it however you want you can uh, all of the research is in the links below so take a look for yourself because this will change the islands um what is she's basically saying is that it, the, with the breeding if a fee even if a female doesn't get out the male and in the injected males, they um, they can actually uh, cro uh, horizontally transfer transmit uh, a completely new uh, type of mosquito through. Uh, and I'm not sure how they do it because I know that they breed on water and things and different things like that. But I did make some notes that um, even without accidental female release, horizontal transmission of the introduced bacteria strain, which is from the males, can create females in the wild. And they actually can completely destroy all the wild ones. All the wild mosquitoes can be gone with this la new lab uh, experimental um, Wolbachian bacteria injected mosquito. So this is something very serious that just comment. All we're asking you guys to do is just comment. Um, let's see, I wanna see if anything, uh, oh, and the, again, she said in the, in the Maui's own assessment um, study, they have said that the, this is possible and scientific studies documented this is likely that a female will get out. Again, Hawaii has no plan in place to stop it. Once that happens, that that's over. That's that's done. It's out in the wild. Um, just seeing if anything else. Oh, peer-reviewed studies. All we're asking is for them to get peer-reviewed studies showing that this approach of doing this bacteria strain is not going to be harmful to people and the environment. Because I have gotten people saying, Michelle, we want to protect our birds. This is going to work. This environmental assessment literally states in the assessment, they don't know if this is going to work. So that's, I just, I know I'm stressing that. And I know I've already said that. Um, Tina, this is a new video on this. We've already did one video with over um, close to 1200 views. Uh, people are talking about this now. What is anything new? Because again, she, Tina has been studying the envi uh, Maui environmental assessment, 260 pages. And uh, what is something new that we can be sharing with people about the um, the dangers of this mosquito, this experiment? Yeah, so I was hoping today to look at, I've been focusing on the chapter three of the environmental assessment, affected environment and environmental consequences, where the state is openly admitting that this is going to have an effect on the uh, noise level, particularly um, on the wildlife. And so there's a few things I want to look at there. And then just, you know, one added thing about, um, you know, where this is going and uh, population replacement and all of that. We looked last time at the federal documents, and that's where they actually admit this might not even work. <laughs> we have no idea, you know, it's unknown, outcome unknown. We've never, you know. Yeah, it's it's outcome unknown, and they have no end date. So it's no like, okay, let's date. do this for the year and see what it's like. There's no yeah. end date. They kind of keep going. They want to create right. a lab that keeps it going without even knowing if it's going to work at all. And, and they don't they even wanna... know the the effects and the dangers that it's going to cause the environment and people, which just, just blows my mind, bringing this yeah. outside of the, the islands. And they and they want to take it to a whole other place that they are have misled the public that this is just about this harmless bacteria, which we've already seen now is not so harmless. And you know they made a big thing about how it's not GMO. It's very clear in the federal documents that that's where they're going with this, not just with the mosquitoes genetically modified, but with the birds. You know, they, so and, they'll and, be, yeah. Okay, so, so we're talking about population yeah, replacement. Look for that page. Okay, 
look for that page. I want you to show, I want you to show this is on the Maui environmental assessment. It's not the mosquitoes that are GMO genetically modified. They want to eventually modify the birds to make them more resistant to malaria, which is actually totally changing the birds. That's their end goal. That's a goal of theirs. So Tina is going to show you in yeah. the Maui environmental assessment where it says that. So it's not about GMO um, mosquitoes, yeah, but it is about that, that, genetic. That one I don't have open, but let me grab it for you. There's a couple of pages. One is in the environmental assessment, and then one is in the federal document where it references a couple of times uh, what they want to do with improving malaria resistance for the birds. And it's very clearly tied into what they're saying in this um, environmental assessment. And this was one of the measures that they you know, weren't ready for, <laughs> basically, is what they're saying, um, genetically modifying the birds, we're not, we're not gonna be doing that right now. But it seems pretty clear to me that that's where all of this is going. And there is one thing that I do want to show separate from this that was an executive order uh, that just went through in the last um, quarter here, that has specifically to do with a lot of this synthetic biology and um, everything being <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll show you that. It's just a brief. Um, yeah, it's just a brief. Sure. Thing, but I can. But so yeah, I do have the um, environmental assessment where it shows uh, genetic genetic modification of forest birds. And um, just to be be clear, that is one of the measures that in this project, in this initial part of the project, they have said we're not going to be doing that. But the wording is that you know we don't we're not ready. <laughs> we're not capable. To do that yet and then when you look yet. at the federal document it's clearly in the goals and immediate it's starting in 2023 where they want to start looking at that there's there's a number of places in there i don't have them where i can show you but i can read you a few things from that and i can show you the the maui portion where it specifically says genetically modifying birds here you thank know. you like you're yeah. a host so you can share your screen anytime okay and just go for that. And so again, we just want you guys to, if you're watching this comment, comment, just ask for the full environmental impact study. That's all we're asking. We want to know this is safe for the people and the, and the island and the Aina. Right. So we're, sh we're showing the screen here. Yep, you got um, it. I can see it. Okay, so this is the Maui environmental assessment. This is on page 117 of the PDF, and these are the measures that they um, are not ready to do, but they clearly are looking at. And again, federally, it's it's clear this is where we're going. So genetic modification of forest birds. Under this scenario, forest bird genetic information will be modified to promote resistance to malarial infections. The practice of gene editing with CRISPR-Cas9 technology has been applied to domestic animals. And then it goes into um, talking about how that's been used. And it's saying te technology for this approach is not available for near-term implementation. So that's uh, essentially why they're not doing that just yet <laughs> in this environmental. What, what does that mean? Going... Technology for the approach for not available for near-term. Does that mean like right now? I think that means right now, because um, in the federal documentation, they are studying this approach uh, is what it appears like, because they're talking about synthetic biology, um, uh, genetic, you know, gene drives and, and things that are related to this concept. And in the same areas where they're talking about CRISPR for the mosquitoes, um, they are talking about increasing malaria resistance in the birds. And so, uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear. And I think if we were to uh, directly ask the state, I don't think they'd be able to get around the fact that this is where this is going. Um, so, yeah. So, can you they, read they the can't next do it two yet. sentences? Can um, you read the next two sentences? Genetic. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Genetic modification of of culturally significant species could be highly controversial. So uh, that could be another reason they weren't ready to throw that at us until they opened this door. And I firmly believe when, when I first heard about this project that allowing this to happen, uh, just this first Walbachia experiment is opening the door 
and it's it's we see where it's going and and this is why they uh tried to present it this way and avoid um what was really behind the long-term plans and not even long-term immediate plans <laughs> immediate plans so as yeah. as they're starting with this Wolbachia, they're also planning to be looking at um, CRISPR technology for the mosquito gene drives, uh, synthetic biology, next generation tools, um, genetic modification of the birds. Wow, 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 wow. What is, uh, what is something else you wanna show us that's, that you've been studying that's, that's new? So this is, this is big, you guys. This is like, they're, they're saying, oh, these are not G GMO mosquitoes, but they're wanting to GMO the birds that they want to save. <laughs> with this mosquito and this mos and they don't even aren't even telling us they don't want to do the full environmental impact study because they don't want to tell us what it's going to do to the planet or to the aina to the people to the insects i mean uh, the I, my also concern is about what happens to the bats and the mos and the dragonflies that eat the injected male mosquitoes with this bacterium that sterilizes female mosquitoes do the bats and do the dragonflies are they then um sterile like what there's so many things there's so much impact on the environment but tina go for it what's the next thing you want to share with us right and the population replacement you know this goes beyond what we're talking about with population replacement with the lab strain uh Wolbachia. this now we're talking about population replacement with genetically modified and i'm going to go ahead and take it there potentially there's nanotechnology involved um, if we're being real about this. And so I do want to show you that um, some people have come across this already. This is an executive order uh, that President Biden signed September 12, 2022, executive order on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation for a sustainable, safe and secure American bioeconomy. And this basically is talking about how everything needs to be tied into um, biotechnology. And I want to point this out specifically this is directly from our white house <laughs> executive order that just happened in september we need to develop genetic engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write circuitry for cells and predictably program biology in the same way in which we write software and program computers wow so, wow wow um I think we know what that means, <laughs> but yeah. we can look at that further. But I do believe that ties into um, what we're looking at with the federal documentation and with everything being focused on next generation tools and um, a, a lot of what's talked about in that document and what has been talked about at that executive level has to do with um, the correlation of nanotechnology and our food system. There's a lot of things to be concerned about here. Everything yep. is is wanting to be tagged and tracked and computerized in some way, and it sounds far out there uh, to some people. It's here, but it's it's already happening, and it's time to wake mm -hmm. up and it's time to understand that this kind of project is the way that they are trying to work these ways. The the this type of technology. Um, through not even a back door, but uh, as an environmental, the environment is going to be a, a main focus of how they're going to um, present these things. And so we have here on Maui and in Hawaii, a clear example of what's coming globally for everybody. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to be looking at it in detail and people are going to come to understand we're not talking you know out there in, <laughs> in, in the clouds. This is real. This is happening. Pay attention, please, people pay attention to what's happening here. What are you showing us here on this page, uh, the mosquito suppression? Okay, so now I want to look at, um, just move into what they're looking at doing now with this Wabakia and with how they're going to release these mosquitoes with the drones and the helicopters and uh, pedestrian, you know, people on foot uh, and how that's going to impact the environment. So this again is from that chapter three of the environmental assessment. And um, this one first thing I want to point out here, this is on page 31, one of the specific considerations under HEPA, HEPA is the Hawaii Environmental Policy Act, which would be the state version of NEPA, which is the National Environmental Policy Act that gives guidelines for how these things are done. 
Uh, one of the specific considerations under HEPA is that the effects of a proposed action on the cultural practices of the community be analyzed. Impacts to cultural resources were considered and dismissed from detailed analysis. Wow. Um, how says, however, okay. <laughs> impact um, yeah, however, was in the, oh, and however, in the appendix, we did our cultural impact assessment. Um, and that is the area where the seven Native Hawaiian uh, lineal descendants oh. and cultural experts had concerns. Of course, also, they were hoping this project would save the birds. But um, all of those concerns were documented and dismissed. Wow. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. From this project, so that's again? about <laughs> honoring the Native Hawaiians and the um, evolution and and the ancestral connection to these birds. Yes, so again, they wanna change these birds, uh, eventually um, changing them so that they are more resistant to malaria. And people go, oh, well, that's such a good idea. The thing is, is they always do it like, oh, that's such a good idea, but they're not looking deeper at why. Why are they doing this? They could be doing something, things, other things that have been supporting these native birds, um, like the breeding, and the uh, maybe checking out the mongoose. How can we start to um, you know uh, uh, to, you know catch and and I don't know what to do with the mongoose. But there's other things that they could be doing versus genetically modifying the native birds. Like that is that is that is huge. So yes, thank you, Tina. Yeah. Keep going. Do you have anything else to share with <laughs> right. us? Yeah, there are Breaking a lot of out. other things they can do and some things that they have been doing to, to keep the environment clean and take care of the um, hoofed animals that are tearing it up and causing standing water where the mosquitoes can breed and different mitigation measures having to do with the uh, mosquitoes um, that they have dismissed and haven't even looked at other ones that are not even included in here. And all of a sudden it's an emergency and we need to um, genetically modify <laughs> and do this right away. Do this right anyway, away. Totally anyway. exempt any safety measures. Totally exempt a, a full environmental impact study because we have to t put take this in emergency because these birds are dying. Uh, they've been dying for a while now, and they're doing things that actually could be helping more. But they they want to put this 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 practice in place without any without knowing if it's even going to work and no end end date and no full environmental impact study of how it's going to affect the environment people all of this and so yes what is the next thing you would like to right. share with us and, and yes you, found? The my, you know the birds have been endangered for some time and the avian malaria is a concern and i do think that there is some urgency um with the birds but this is not the answer and um i don't know that other answers have been looked at seriously i feel like there's way more behind this agenda uh, but I do want to respect the fact that there are people that feel like this needs to happen because they're so worried about the birds. We're worried about the birds too, for, for both reasons, for the reason mm -hmm. that they are experiencing uh, this decline because of the avian malaria and because of where the state is going with what they want to target the birds with. This is not the answer. This is not at all in line with what the birds are uh, about as far as their um, connection with the islands and the Native Hawaiians and the, the spirit of, of the islands. So um, wow. this I want to point out in the environmental assessment, um, page 54, this is their conclusion uh, about the effects of this on the environment. The proposed action impacts additional wilderness character qualities, including untrammeled quality, undeveloped quality, and opportunity for solitude from the use of mechanized equipment for incompatible mosquito releases. So the conclusion is, yes, this is going to impact all of the areas that they looked at. Um, and that's how they're presenting it to the public. Yes, we're going to <laughs> we're going to be impacting everything with the noise and and some other things. Wow, um, are in different areas of the mitigation measures, and um, there there is something else I want to point out towards the end about. Yeah, that. go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. And so then here, this on page thirty three. This is talking about the noise. 
The existing ambient of 35 decibels includes the noise of aviation, which is the dominant and possibly the only non-natural sound that could be heard in the area. So they're talking about how documented the what the um, decibel noise level is currently, and they're admitting here that basically uh, potentially the only non-natural sound that's currently heard in the area is the noise of aviation. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, that's them saying that um, helicopters and now drones, uh, which I don't know that would fall under aviation, but clearly is another mechanized um, noise that we're going to look at, is the only non-natural noise, and they're wanting to increase it um, quite a bit. <laughs> if you look at the schedule of, you know, how many drone uh, releases and, and helicopters and then helicopters dropping off the um, people that will be releasing and doing the monitoring and everything. So, and also the packages, the, the packaging yes. that houses these mosquitoes goes onto the environment. What, how long does the, does it take for the packaging to biodegrade? What are the effects of the, of the INA from the packaging? Do other insects or um, other species eat that? Does it harm them? Like there's so many different things. And that's why we're asking if you're listening again, comment below. And all we're asking is that they do a full environmental impact statement slash impact study that's all we're asking. We want to know, is this going to, uh, is, is this going to endanger the Aina and everything on it? Because this is an outside of Hawaii. It is not currently on Hawaii or they're bringing it into Hawaii, which will change things. And we want to make sure that it is safe before they do that. So what, what are you showing us now, yeah. Tina? So, and um, I do have something about the packaging towards the end here, um, but basically you're correct. They are uh, releasing these mosquitoes in biodegradable, quote unquote, biodegradable packaging, and they really are not addressing how that's going to affect the environment or the wildlife, how long it's going to take to biodegrade. I will show you that um, towards the end here. Um, so here again, page 38 of the environmental assessment. Activities associated with the proposed action would result in noise that could impact the acoustic environment, visitor experience, sensitive wildlife, and wilderness character. Okay, so, um, and the, and I'm just pointing out just a few examples of where they are openly admitting to um, the noise level, how it's impacting, uh, and they have specifically said that it could disturb the wildlife, um, so, you know, if you're not so concerned about the visitor experience or how this affects people, um, this could th this could affect even breeding. I mean, if you're disturbing, disrupting the wildlife, we don't know how that's going to affect the bigger picture um, and you know the supposed goals of this project. Uh, so here we have um, the drone noise levels. So just the drones. Again, there's helicopters involved, <laughs> but just the drones, which are the primary method. So the primary method of incompatible mosquito release within the project area, the 64,666 acres that covering, you know, the bulk of the East Maui there, would be through the use of drones. The sound produced by consumer grade battery powered rotary or fixed wing drone at ground level is similar to loud highway noise. Wow. wow. Okay. That's a little bit surprising, <laughs> right? We're being, we're being led mm -hmm. to believe now, you know, they are saying the drones are at a certain um, elevation, but uh, nevertheless, that's, that doesn't sound like an appropriate sound to introduce into that natural environment. Um, so here on page 42, at the upper limit of the estimated decibel levels, drone noise could possibly be loud enough to disrupt conversations. I don't know if people were expecting to hear that. That sounds pretty loud. And, and we're talking about these drones, you know, being uh, up, to, up to twice a week through um, 64,666 acres. I believe it's uh, two drones and different schedules and, you know, but this is, um, this is a lot of drones. <laughs> it's a lot and of just drones. Remember, uh, yeah. <laughs> and just remember, they have no end date. They have no, no end, date. end date. This will be yes. continuing for how, who knows how long they want to create a lab that keeps these mosquitoes going and keeps this going. So, right. okay, good. What do you else, what's next? 
Okay, so page 46, um, when the impacts of the proposed action are added to the impacts of present and reasonably foreseeable actions, an overall adverse cumulative impact on the acoustic environment spread over the entire core area would last until sufficient mosquito population suppression is achieved. Okay, so, so again, what does that mean in layman's that terms? This, uh, <laughs> This is them saying that um, as long as this goes on, it's going to be a sound issue. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's going, an, there's no end yeah. So that's, so that's just yeah. another way to show you that um, they're, they're admitting this repeated. And here mm -hmm. we go, page 52, the broad intervention of wildlife through the release of mosquitoes using any of the three methods, that would be helicopter, drone, or pedestrian, would result in an adverse impact on the untrammeled quality of wilderness for the life of the plan, likely at least 20 years. So again, wow. no end date, but at least 20 years of these drones and helicopters and uh, everything else that is coming with um, not just lab reared Wolbachia bacteria infected mosquitoes, but um, whatever else they might want to be releasing genetically modified. Um, mosquitoes, birds. Um, so at least 20 years. Wow. And then here we're going to look at um, the packaging, which they don't address. It, it, they really are not addressing the packaging. Um, this is what they say about it. Incompatible mosquitoes, this is page 53, incompatible mosquitoes may be released in small biodegradable packages designed to open upon contact with the canopy or forest floor. These mosquito packages dropped via aerial means would result in an impact to the undeveloped quality of wilderness for as long as they remain in the environment until they biodegrade. No they don't have frame. a date. No, they, and, and you know what? How can they not even have a date? Is it, is it that they maybe do have a date and they don't wanna tell us what that is? Some things that are biodegradable take years. Yeah, we have no yeah. idea. And, and here they are admitting it's going to affect and, and we're talking about millions of mosquitoes. I don't know how many are going to be in a package, but we can estimate based on the, the number of flights <laughs> that at least it's as many of those flights as, as how many packages we're dealing with. So hundreds, yeah. thousands, so that, yeah, um, twice millions. I don't know <laughs> uh, how long is it. I, I just don't even want to see this ever start I, I i can't believe i can't believe that the state is presenting this as some kind of an environmental um honoring project so if they if they just had one package which i bet it's more than one i bet it's more than one but if they had just one package per helicopter per drone per person that's 104 a year times 20 that's 2080 packages um but that's just one package per drone or per helicopter per um uh per the time if it's twi twice a week if they go out twice a week i'm sure there's going to be more than one package i'm sure it's you know it's over 60 um thousand acres uh so um that's going to be a lot i mean that is 104 just by one you know times that by i mean that's 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 ginormous so what are you what are you yeah, showing us I here <laughs> I was going to take a look at the, um, we do have the schedule of, you know, how many, uh, how many drones are going to go, how many helicopters are going to go out. I'd have to do a little math on that. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm sure know, it's more can, than that. But that's... People are welcome to take a look at our website, hawaiiunites.org, and under the experiment page, it has um, the schedules, the flight hours of the drones and the helicopters, and you can do a little math on that. And if you want to conservatively estimate, it's going to be at least one of the one of these biodegradable packages per flight on, on helicopter yeah. drone, add all that up. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be one. <laughs> I think there's yeah. going to be multiple, I think but I can't numerous, say for numerous. sure because they are not yeah. telling us. Um, so yeah. here, just to close this part out, this is um, page 52 of the environmental assessment, how the environment is affected and the consequences and the state's analysis. Under the proposed action, incompatible mosquitoes will be released within the project area using aerial methods, primarily drones. Monitoring activities associated with the proposed action would also include helicopter use and landings within two sites in wilderness, in addition to the use of portable generators at two sites in wilderness. The untrammeled, natural, undeveloped, and opportunities for solitude or primitive and unconfined recreation quality of wilderness would be impacted by the proposed action. So 
Wow. They're telling us we are going to impact all of these uh, specific areas that we focused on that we're concerned about uh, maintaining the the integrity, the natural beauty, um, you know, the, the reason that we go to the wilderness, the protection of the wildlife, the, the native birds themselves will be impacting that for at least 20 years and beyond and, and also in other ways that we're discussing in this environmental assessment. And this is what they're presenting to the public as the um, environmental assessment stating that they, they don't foresee any significant impact on the environment right while they're telling us that they are impacting the environment and then trying to downplay it. And this environmental assessment is their way of not doing the environmental impact statement, uh, which would go into a lot more detail and study of how this affects uh, the environment and the wildlife and the birds. Um, that's why we all need to speak up and comment on the environmental assessment and let them know, no, this the, what you're presenting to us is not an acceptable analysis of just how much of a tremendous impact this is gonna have on our environment. We, we are yeah. demanding an environmental impact statement. We want detailed studies and we want all of these concerns to look at things that were, have not even been addressed at all in this environmental assessment. Um, including things like the biodegradable packaging that they are presenting here and just, you know, moving right on without addressing. So yes, please, everybody take a look at this document yourself. Um, this is the state's own information. It is disturbing and we need to uh, let them know that it's not acceptable. Cool. Yes. Uh, go ahead and un unshare your screen for me, Tina, and we'll finish this. We'll finish this up. So again, if uh, you're watching this, please comment. the The Maui Environmental Assessment. We we can. They're asking for public comment, and what we are asking from if you even love Hawaii at all, you can comment. You don't have to live here on the islands. Uh, if you ever want to come here, if you've been here, you know how beautiful these islands are. All we're asking is for them to do a full environmental impact statement. That's it. We want peer reviewed science that this project is safe for the Aina, for the land, for the people on it, for the other and in, other insects or um, animals. Like I was saying, what happens to the bats and the dragonflies that just eat these injected well bacchium bacteria? Are they going to be safe? Are they going to be affected by this bacteria? Now they're talking about uh, modifying the birds in this study. They're literally saying that they want to modify our, the, the birds here, the native birds. So those of you who are, are they're, they're, your goal with this is to save the native birds, look at the study. They're saying they wanna modify the native birds now so that they are more resistant to malaria, but what is that gonna do to these native birds? There is a God in heaven that created these species. We, there's other ways that, that they can be saving these birds and supporting them to thrive in the environment versus put something in the environment that has that is absolutely unknown if this is even going to work has a, a limit a minimum of 20 years that they're going to be doing this and all we're asking is them to do a full environmental impact statement so that everything is safe and we know these islands are safe because those of you who have lived on the Hawaii Islands, you know about the Cokies that were introduced. There's these Cokies that, that seeing at nighttime that are from Puerto Rico that now are never gonna leave the islands. There's a mongoose that was introduced that was never here before. Uh, they are affecting in, in different ways. So all we're asking before they bring in an, in an injected mosquito is to do a full environmental impact statement that's all we ask. We want peer-reviewed science that this is safe for the people, for our keiki, our children, the future of these islands and the people and the everything that lives on them. So um, that's what we're asking. Tina, any last comments um, before we do a prayer uh, visualization? Yeah, I know we didn't look at that federal document that ties in with all of the synthetic biology and the genetic modifications. And I think that you did have a link last time. So if there could be a link to that so people could take a look. And that document is only, I believe, 20 pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll and put I'll put that link. I'll put that link below because I think I'm going to title this um, this interview something about 
are they GM, are they trying to GMO our birds or something like that? Um, because that is what we that's that's the end game here. That's that's in the assessment that we're not making this up. You know, somebody was like, oh, that's not true. Read it for yourself. It's literally in black and white on print from the Maui from the state Hawaii state, which has done a very small environmental assessment and has all of these um, uh, possible impacts that are going to happen. And then the, what, what is it called? What is the document called for the federal? Um, I can't remember the name uh, of that. That's a strategy for, uh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry, something strategy. But yeah, yeah we have a so, link to that. Um, I, can, I can find that for you real quick. Yeah, we're gonna leave the link in the description as well as I, I will do a highlight the area where it talks about modifying the birds okay so those of you who are loving the birds and wanting this to work for the birds i, I you know i want to save our native birds too but this is not the way to do it so we will leave that link in the description as yeah. well as the link to comment we have they want public comment so let's voice our opinion we have power together you guys so if you again live in hawaii don't live in hawaii please comment um, for uh, an, a full environmental impact statement to be done so that we know that this is this experiment is safe. And that's all we're asking. That's all we're asking. Uh, any last comments, um, Tina? Um, yeah, that federal document is U.S. Department of the Interior Strategy for Preventing the Extinction of Hawaiian Forest Birds. And it is connected to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is a partner in this project. It's one of the multi-agency partners in the Birds Not Mosquito. Well, do you know which page that's on? You, you um, can share your screen again if you do. Uh, we can, there's, we can, uh, there's multiple pages that um, discuss the um, improving malaria resistance in birds. That's on uh, page seven. It's one of the. Yeah, objectives. go ahead and screen share. Oh, screen share so you can uh, people can, if they don't want to look at it and they want to just see it on the video, it's right here. This is yeah. not us making this up. Uh, let's see if I can grab that here. Yeah, so again, if you're watching this, the link to comment, add your public comment. That's all we're asking you to do. All we're asking is for a full environmental impact statement because we want peer study. We want to know this is safe for the INF for the people before they bring in outside bacteria and introduce it. I mean, for a minimum of 20 years, it's going to change things, everyone. Yeah, so on page seven of that federal document, um... First here, we see field trials of methods for improving malaria resistance in birds. And that's the exact terminology, improving malaria resistance in birds uh, that was discussed in the environmental assessment where it had genetically mod genetic modification of forest birds. And this is all in the context of next generation tools, um, genetics facilities, in vitro and in vivo tool trials, uh, research and development for synthetic biology, um, and then there are additional references to this um, research and development for synthetic biology tools and um, new models for private and public partnerships to support novel technology deployment and implementation, considering intellectual property rights. So they're very much looking at using uh, the state of Hawaii as their uh, petri dish um, for these experiments, not only with this bacteria, but with genetic tools and all of these things that we are concerned about right now that are moving very, very quickly, very quickly. Our federal government um, is, is uh, pushing for this to happen and they are targeting our state to be at the forefront of it. And we need to speak up, we need to understand it, and we need to put a stop to it before it gets out of control. And we no longer can, uh, I mean, this is this is irreversible. It is irreversible. So speak up. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tina, for that. Go ahead and unshare. And um, yes, so let's just do a quick prayer. I'm very much into praying to this infinite source of love the same infinite intelligence that is moving the sun across the sky running the tides in the ocean beating our hearts breathing our bodies there is a higher purpose for this i think it's for awakening so people wake up and and start to get involved and and so let's just pray to this amazing source of infinite love and just take a deep breath into your body and exhale and just go ahead and put your hands on your heart this heart that is pumping a gallon of blood through your body per minute, 
your body is breathing itself right now. It's being breathed by this infinite intelligence. And this infinite intelligence, which again is moving the sun, inching it across our beautiful sky, guiding the whales on their migration, which are here right now on the big island of Hawaii, guiding our bees to their next flower, to pollinate the flowers, to bring us honey. This infinite intelligence, which has put the stars in the heavens, which is running billions of processes in our body per second as we sit here in stillness, we are totally, totally taken care of. And right now we just send so much appreciation and gratitude for the people who are doing what is right, not what is easy, but what is right for the Aina, for the land, for, for Hawaii, for Mother Gaia. We give so much gratitude for the people who are commenting on this Maui environmental assessment and just asking our state, we want a full environmental impact statement. We want peer reviewed studies that show us that the Aina, the land, the people, everything on the islands will be safe from this experiment. We want a full environmental impact study and we give so much gratitude right now for the scientists, for the, the native planning, for the planning department of this study that says, yes, we're gonna do a full environmental impact statement before we, we introduce a bacterium on the islands, we're gonna do a full environmental impact statement for the state of Hawaii, for the islands of Hawaii, for the people and for everything on them, because we wanna make sure that the Aina is safe. We wanna make sure that these birds, these native birds are safe, that this environmental, this experiment isn't going to hinder insects, other insects, other bats or dragonflies. It's not gonna harm the land when these packages drop and sit there for how long. We wanna know full environmental impact statement is done. And we wanna know for certain peer reviewed that these islands are safe. And we give so much gratitude for the heart of those that want to save the native birds, because that's what this comes from. This comes from love. This comes from the, the desire to see our beautiful native birds thriving again on these islands, on, these, on this Aina. So we ask in so much reverence of this amazing power that is beating our hearts and running the tides in the ocean and singing the songs of the birds. We give so much gratitude knowing that they are safe and that they are thriving, that they can thrive again in a way that is safe for the islands and everybody on them. And we give so much gratitude for those courageous enough to speak up and to do what is right. And we breathe into these amazing human bodies, which again is being breathed by an infinite intelligence an infinite love that is moving the sun, moving the stars in the sky, running the tides, guiding the turtles to pop up for air, guiding the dolphins to swim and jump and spin. We give so much gratitude for our parts, for our kuleana at this time in history, knowing that these islands are always kept safe under the absolute knowingness that there is something higher and more powerful than our humanness and that we trust in this higher power, this infinite source of love that started the planet in the first place, that created these birds, that created our bodies. We give so much gratitude to this higher power and breathing into this present moment, knowing that everything that we are doing is being guided through love and through the knowingness that we are all truly, truly always taken care of. And breathing into this present moment in this present time, giving so much gratitude to ourselves and to this planet and to this amazing Aina that supports us every single day, breathing into this human body. And so it is. 
Tina, thank you so much for joining me again. And again, for those of you, comment. We have a power to speak up. Hawaii is asking for our comments. The link is in the description. You can copy and paste, change it however you want. Um, but please do comment and please share this video, uh, like it, subscribe to this channel. There's gonna be more information coming for this year, which is gonna be outstanding. So much, much aloha and Tina again, much mahalo. Thank you so much, Michelle. Great, so I'll ask you to stop the recording since you're host. Okay. <laughs> Thank you aloha. for that. And oh, and I hear these are beautiful, uh, our um, uh, parrots are, are actually just passed by oh, beautiful flock perfect. of them. So <laughs> they're in approval of this message. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Thank you so much. Aloha. All right. Aloha. Bye.